Hey, this is such an honor to talk to both of you, Kevin McCarthy, uh, Washington. Hey, how are you? Good to hey, see good. you. How are you doing? Good to see you yeah. again, too. Uh, this film blew my mind. It changed cinematic immersion for me forever. And I was thinking about moments in my life when I've watched movies that have changed immersion for me. The only one I could go back to was The Dark Knight when Chris Nolan flips that 18 wheeler in 70 millimeter IMAX. And that scene blew my mind. It changed my life. Denis did the same thing for me here with <laughs> Dune. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's what he does right after. <laughs> Oh, and Timmy, you'll appreciate this. I actually have an interstellar tattoo. It says stay. No it's, the, way. It's, it's the Morse code. In the Morse code no of that? Way. That's awesome. That's yeah. one of my favorite movies. I genuinely like you don't you you because know here's you, you know you don't know that because I forgot that you were in it because it was my favorite <laughs> yeah, I'm movie not, I'm before not I met much. you. I'm not in that. No, 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 Man, before, thank God I made things since. You. Yeah. Like, really? That was your so favorite? And I was like, oh shit, he is in that movie. Yeah. That's the best Nolan movie of all time, I would argue. Um, but I I I agree with you. I want to ask you each, what is the movie that changed immersion for you? It was a dark night like you. Yeah, that's seriously, why that's the movie when I was when, said that. when I was 12 and I saw that. I had the feeling when I was watching Heath Ledger that I had no clue what he was doing, but that I had some clue of what he was doing, too. Mm-hmm. And that really excited me. And but 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 uh, immersion is a good word because that's uh, I think that would that was the first for me. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Zendaya for you? I, I don't know. That's a great that's a great question. I don't know, because um, I, I always <laughs> I, my parents didn't really have an issue with me going to see movies that I probably was too young to see. So I probably, I saw everything from when I was like a little kid. Like I was like, you seen like R-rated movies. In yeah. Time? Yeah. So I don't know. I was immersed very yeah, early. Like Halloween <laughs> um, me when I was nine. Yeah. And my love for, you know, my love for what I do actually didn't come from movies. It came from, from theater. Cause my mom, she worked at the California Shakespeare theater. When I was little. No so way. I fell in love with acting oh. because of those guys. So for me, my immersion was being in that in that um, ample theater every 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 day. I was there all the time, and then I I would love when the when the actors would literally come out into the audience and 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 work that way. And I was like, that this That's is cool. like I want to do cool. this, whatever they're doing, you know. So different version of it, but I saw many a play. I'm so excited. Uh, Timothy, uh, I'm genuinely, genuinely uh, need part two in my life. I need that film. So I need it so badly. I want to ask you, uh, Timothy, for you first, the idea of filming a movie where you're essentially doing half of the character's arc. And mm-hmm. I wanted to know like, kind of what that means to you as an actor to kind of like do a half of his arc and the concept of not, not shooting this film back to back. And then for Zendaya, for you, what conversations have you had with Denis about the possibilities of part two? And do you guys think we'll definitely get it? Because I, I, I need it. I really do. I need this film. And we're right, we're right there with you. And uh, I think they might have let it slip on the... <laughs> right, Carbon Lesson. I don't know how legit that was, but they were all like, yes, yeah. it's ready to go. But um, but uh, all the people that, you know, the power, the, yeah, the people that can actually can. green light that. But um, but um, that's a great question because I knew I knew we really wanted to capture an essence to Paul of what he was like pre this Gom Jabbar scene. Not that the movie stays with him that much pre that scene, but who is this young man before he's you know launched into this, mm-hmm. into this uh, on this journey? Uh, and yet you know, a lot of the conversations with Denis and I on set, you can't, like Neo in the Matrix, you can't flip the switch at some point and say, hey, when do I become, well, actually, I don't want to give mm-hmm. anything away, but uh, but um, I think it was really important to Denis that it never felt like tapping into the Muad'Dib or the Mahdi um, concept too early. Um, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'll leave, uh, the art takes place in the head of the audience members, so I'll leave it up to people, but I don't know if we really even see him in this movie, really, so... Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly one of the most exciting things without giving anything away, although maybe we'll have read the book, is where Paul Atreides does go and the the ways where an ethical classic hero's arc would go one direction. That's not at all where Frank Herbert led mm-hmm. Paul. Mm-hmm. And Zandaria, for you real fast on the part two uh, arc, what you, conversations you've had? I wasn't able to have as much prep time as I would have <laughs> liked for, for this time around, you know? And I think we just kind of scratched the surface of, of these characters um, and, and what, and, and where, obviously, if you've read the books, you know, where it goes, <laughs> you know, if I, if you know what's going to happen, then, you know, there's a lot left of the book. <laughs> right. Um, and so I, I don't know, for me, it was just kind of like stepping into this, this massive thing with such a, also massive following and people who really, uh, you know, uh, have loved the book since they were children mm-hmm. um, and have grown up with it. And in many ways have been, have been waiting for this kind of moment. Um, that is another layer of, of, of 
not, I wouldn't say pressure. I would almost say like um, motivation to yeah. do a better job. And I think you guys did such a beautiful job at taking that and being so responsible with that and, and letting that guide you and motivate you to make something so beautiful. So in many ways, I'm like, kind of like a fan from the outside, you know, just like, what's going to happen next? Like uh, there was so much <laughs> that I didn't see that they shot. So when I watched, it, I was like, Oh my gosh, it's so much better than I thought. Like I could have even imagined in my brain and like, I was blown away. So I would love to, 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 to get back into it with, with these guys. Cause I mean, it's, it's just an incredible group of people. And I felt so, uh, so much a part of the family and, and uh, these characters have so much more to do uh, and so much more to discover about themselves. And, and, uh, and I, and I feel lucky to be a small uh, piece of this one. So um, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's so much, there's literally yeah. so much left. So this is only the beginning, literally only, this the, is beginning. only the beginning. I can't <laughs> wait. Congratulations to you both. Hans Zimmer score changed my life as well. Congratulations to you both. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. How good is that score, man? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I heard Hans Zimmer score for this film, that, that Paul's dream theme that plays in the trailer is one of the most beautiful pieces of music. I think it's one of the best scores he's ever written in his yeah. entire career. I wanted to ask you where you were the moment you heard that piece of music, because it, to me, it's such an immersive part of the film. It's an immersive part of the story, along with everything else. Where were you when you first heard that? It's very simple. The answer: I was in Montreal. I was like it was in COVID, and uh, when we were all uh, under uh, uh, severe COVID restriction, I was alone at home, and I was having a conversation like we we have right now with Anne. Anne was super nervous, and he wanted me to listen to his score, and and uh, and and he, and he he played the score, and I listened to the score. Uh, him watching me, and I remember crying because. Uh, 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 I, I felt that Anne's ad uh, brought the the emotions and the the everything we had talked about. He had done it. Uh, uh, it was very moving for me to see Anne's doing this score because yeah. he's, he's one of the great masters of film history, of the, one of the greatest composer and uh, of all time. And to see him trying to push the envelope to, to find new ways of expressing himself, putting himself in artistic danger. It was beautiful to see him uh, 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 create new instruments and approaching music in a different way and trying to use the language in a different way and uh, the language of music. And it's like, uh, Hans did, I think, a, a, a masterpiece of a score. And I'm so proud that he did that for one of my movie. I think he's, <laughs> Like it's a tremendous artist and and then a very inspiring one and I would be grateful for forever for him to having done that for the Dune. Couldn't agree more. It's one of the best scores of his entire career, and it's so different than anything he's ever done before. I can pinpoint very few moments in my life where I sat in a theater and cinematic immersion changed for me forever. One of the moments I always remember is Dark Knight, seventy millimeter IMAX, one four three to one aspect ratio, and that and Nolan flipping that truck was so incredible. I felt the same way watching your film. And I wanted to ask you. I know you talk a lot about Star Wars being a major thing, uh, a movie for you in your lifetime. What's another film where you felt that immersion? shift for you that it changed the way movies were made and it changed the way you felt about being immersed in a world well, frankly i remember uh, it would be a strange answer maybe for you because I, I will talk about a movie that was done a while ago uh, uh, i remember seeing a, a, a 70 millimeter print of lawrence of arabia uh, when i was a teenager at, at film school i was alone in a, in a massive theater watching this four hours movie where and being mesmerized by the power of the uh, of cinema of David Lean, you know, and, and uh, that movie had a tremendous impact on me at the time. And then uh, that was one of the big, 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 big moment of a cinematic experience of my life, watching Lawrence of Arabia and 70 millimeter alone in a theater for four hours. Yeah. That's amazing. A uh, 70 millimeter can actually change films for you completely. I remember seeing Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and 70 millimeter at Arclight, and it changed the film completely for me just from a visual and sound perspective. Denis, uh, when I watch this film, obviously when the title card pops up as Dune Part One, as, as the film ends, I, I there was a part of me, I, I cannot wait to see what you do with Part Two. And I wanted to know when you put on the title card, Dune Part One, does that definitively mean you will get to make Part Two? And also were, were there conversations in Initially in the beginning about shooting it back to back was that ever even a uh, ever even a, um, an idea to do yes <clears throat> at the beginning and that's what I suggested my my uh, my uh, 
I, I suggested to the studio to do it in two parts <clears throat> because I felt that the book was too complex to, to bring it to the screen in, in just one movie. I think it would have been dangerous to do that. I think we will have lost the, 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 a lot of ideas, a lot of the, of the poetry of the book. And, and uh, it's a book that takes it, it's all its strength into detail. So I, I, I really, uh, I would have not done a, a movie with a, a, uh, an adaptation uh, with just one movie. I needed at least uh, I, I, what I would say a huge movie divided in two parts. Then I suggested to do to the two parts <clears throat> together, but uh, that, that that was too expensive. That that would have been too expensive to do. Um, so uh, um, we decided to, to do a gamble, which I love, to take the risk to do just the part one and see how the people will react. And according to this reaction, to decide if we do a part two or not. And, and I agreed with the, the, those terms. And uh, um, um, we'll see what will happen next. Uh, hopefully, uh, I would love it to happen because it, it, it would be strange to leave Paul, Shani, and Jessica and still go walking in the desert uh, for it. <laughs> but but uh, 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 I will say that uh, knowing the, the, the terms of the, of the, the deal, uh, I, I put all my energy and all my passion and all uh, 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 everything in, into Dune Part One. Uh, not knowing the outcomes, I said, if ever Dune Part Two don't don't have, doesn't happen, at least I will have fulfilled some part of my desires. You know, I will have a go, but uh, I would love it to to move. One thing I will say is that I'm I'm grateful that it happened this way at the end of the day because. It required so much uh, energy to do this movie that uh, I don't think I will add uh, enough uh, stamina to do back to back. So it's nice to do the first one, take a break, think about it, and then come back uh, 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 with more energy to do the second one. Well, let me tell you, to wrap me up, I just want to say this has been an honor to speak with you. Uh, you have made one of the greatest cinematic achievements in the history of movies, and I think you should be so damn proud of what you've done here. Everything from the production design to the score to Greg Frazier's... So I can't wait to see the 1431 IMAX scenes when it fully comes out in IMAX. So congratulations to you. You are one of the greatest storytellers and filmmakers of our time, and I mean that by every word I say. Congratulations to you, sir. Very generous, but frankly... It's welcome right now because I'm a bit uh, tired and I need that energy. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very generous. Thank you. No way. It's so good to see you, man. Thanks for thanks for adding. I thought this wasn't going to happen. I was told at some point this wasn't going to happen. Look at behind you. You made it happen. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to Liz Mahoney. Wait, Tell Liz Mahoney I said hi. I had no idea this interview was happening until ten minutes ago. I was in my pajamas. You to do it. Yeah, I am. Do so it. It's so good to see you both. Javier, pleasure to talk to you as well. Uh, Josh, always good, great to see you, brother. Um, I want to talk to you about what this movie did in terms of cinematic immersion for me. Uh, I can only pinpoint a couple moments in my lifetime where cinematic immersion changed for me. When I watched The Dark Knight and watched Nolan flip that 18-wheeler in 70-millimeter IMAX, it changed the way I was immersed in the world. Denis did the exact same thing here for me. I wanted to ask each of you, what's that movie for you? What's a movie that you saw that changed the way you you viewed a film, immersed yourself in the world? I'll go to you, Josh, first. Um, there was a couple of them. Star Wars was a major one when I was a kid that, that shifted something in me. It was like reading Martian Chronicles or Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury when I was a kid. Something just, I just realized I didn't have to deal with this reality all the time, mm -hmm. that I could actually take off on these excursions of other people's imaginations. Um, I think... Uh, Inception was that a bit for me. I think the Matrix was that a bit. I was very, I remember I left the Matrix theater and I turned around and I walked right back in the theater and watched mm. it again. Wow. I was really moved by the, the acting is important, obviously, and all that, but the theme and the mm. and the direction was so powerful to me. It just it it suddenly became very personal. Mm. Javier, for you, is there a film? It was ET. Oh, oh yeah, I know, seriously. Man. What was e it about ET? Oh, I saw it. I, I met Spielberg once and I said, I, I've seen your movie 24 times in the movie theater. <laughs> For me, it was, no it, you know, it, was <laughs> it was transformative. It was so emotional and so beautiful and such a beautiful love story. And also being a, a child and the relation of a, a child taking care of another child and the absence of the father because the father doesn't show up mm -hmm. in any way or form and how does affect that child with that little alien and 
I mean, a lot of things in that movie that really got me in. So that, and of course there are many others, but E.T. was a big one for me. Yeah, Josh, I, want, I wanted to ask you this uh, question since I saw the trailer for the first time. Thank you for sharing that, Javier, by the way. It's really crazy you saw it 24 times. Um, but the line you say, they're brutal. It's mm. there's there's a delivery to that line that is so impactful. It says everything you need to know about the character. And that, to me, that line is, is a definitive way of telling us that you have seen stuff. You have seen things go down. And, and there's mm. something about the power of your voice in that moment. And I wanted to ask about how you found the way you were going to say they're brutal, what direction you got from Denis and kind of wh what that delivery means to you as an actor. You know, it's funny because Denis called me at about it was like two or three in the morning in Budapest. And he was like, I had. <laughs> a dream and uh and i was like good for you and, and, and he said uh no i did the scene is different uh you need to uh come over and i was like nah it's two o'clock in the morning and i'm sleeping and tell me about the dream just tell me and he was like no 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 no. you have to come over and so he got me to come over to his house and we started rewriting that scene about two days before okay. so i didn't know the scene perfectly so <laughs> you resort to like a tell in a poker game where you kind of get angry where just because you don't know the scene, you're not on top of the scene. Mm -hmm. And he cut that scene in a way, he cut out some things, some informationally. And I think it's a much better scene now than what we wrote, or he took the best parts of that scene. But I know that it was charged because that's the first scene that I did with Timothy. Mm -hmm. And there's something that, it's not what you wanna hear necessarily, but there's something personally charged because it's the beginning of the movie for you. It's important, you realize that scene is important. There's things that were cut out where he talks about the scar on his face and where he got it and how he got it. But then Denis goes in and he realizes we just need the essentials of these moments, you know what I mean? So it ends up being a more powerful scene than one we actually did. Wow. Well, I want to say congratulations. They're already giving me the wrap. I want to say this film meant so much to me, Josh. You yeah. adding me to your list for this was is so amazing to me. Th to tell Liz Mahoney, I said thank you, and I, I really it was an honor to talk to both of you for this. The spit scene is one of my favorite scenes I've seen in a movie in a long time. That scene is iconic and awesome. Just the <laughs> idea of what the moisture means to people and what it means to them, and the sign of respect that that scene means. It's a beautiful moment. So congratulations to you both. You guys should be very proud of the work you did. Thanks, thank man. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Good to see you again, buddy. Great to see you again, too. Uh, I, I really appreciate the time. I know you're not feeling too well, but I appreciate you powering through and doing these interviews because this movie means so much to me, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, man. Yeah, bro, me too. Um, this is the best performance of your career, and I mean that in every sense of the word. I Emotionally, internally, I was blown away by what you did here. This is one of the most incredible cinematic immersive experiences I've ever had in my life. And I wanted to ask you, in terms of you going to the movies, like for me, I can only pinpoint a few moments in my life where cinematic immersion changed the way I viewed a film. Dark Knight with Nolan and now with Denis. I'm wondering for you, what's that film for you? I mean, this is definitely one of those films, bro. I, ugh, what's the most impactful film I went to? Um, I mean, There Will Be Blood was a big one for me. You know what I mean? Like, There Will Be Blood, obviously, The Shining, but I guess I got to see it in the theater, but I didn't get to see it when it came out in the theater. You know, this is one yeah. of those things, man. I, I, this kind of film, you can turn off the music and just the absolute paintings shot by shot. You can turn off the images, and it's just the sound. It's yeah. so fucking good in this movie and the soundtrack is just unbelievable I, it's i've never been in anything that you could classify as cinema it's a film it's a block but you know what i mean like this is a masterpiece and it's an honor to even be talking about this so yes while i'm sick as shit is an honor to be even talking about denny's movie yeah, I mean, Greg Fraser's cinematography is absolutely mind blowing. Hans Zimmer's score is one of the best scores he's ever written in his entire career, and he's still mastering it. I want to ask you as an actor, when you see your performance put to a Hans Zimmer score, what does that do to you emotionally? Because you're there on the day you're shooting it. You don't have the music. What's that like for you to hear that? Bro, that fight scene, that end fight scene. I'm going like, ah, oh, my God. I've, I've seen it three times now, dude. <laughs> and I watched it, the first time I watched it was in a sound studio. So it was literally where they do all the mixing. So it's not like designed for like, it's good for a couple seats. But bro, the sound design was just insane. That was the first thing I came out going like, I just, it's, there's no way it's going to win awards. It has to. 
Yeah, it. I agree with you. It is an absolute masterpiece. What, right before I got on this interview with you, you posted on your Instagram of the brand new Aquaman suit. I can't not ask you what that new suit means to you, and like, and like, what, what, what? Can you give me any update on what that suit's going to be for the character? I'm not sure, if I'm allowed to say what that suit does, but I think if people do the research and they know what it, the suit is, it's going to be exciting for for the Uber fans of you know what we're kind of doing and what we're honoring with uh, the Aquaman fans. So it's fun, man. Uh, it's really, there's a lot of comedy in it. There's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of high stakes where a lot of loss. And there's a lot, you know what I mean? So there's, it's, it's really you know, another honor because on the page, it's just so good. The script is so good and solid. So um, I know we're going to be the first one technology's advanced in the last four years, what we're going to be able to do underwater. Um, it's exciting to see. So I'm, I'm super pumped. Even though I'm sick as shit, I, you made me feel better. So thank you. Oh, I, dude, I, this whole thing is like the excitement you're getting up to. I'm like, we're only halfway through. I'm like, hurry up. I need the next one. I need the fix. You know what I mean? It's not even out yet. I want more. Well, Jason, they're at me. I just want to say congratulations to you. I meant every word I said. You should be so amazingly proud of the work you did here. It's an absolute masterpiece. Denise, one of the greatest filmmakers to ever do it. And the fact that your performance in this just blew my mind. And I hope you know how much this means to me to talk to you today. So thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, brother. Sorry I'm sick, man. Don't worry. I wanted to know what that movie was for you, a film that you saw that changed the way you watched films. Oh, that's going deep, dude. Sorry. Okay, I'm hungover. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, well, the premiere was last night. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I want to say? I'm sorry. I'm just taking another question. I'm making another question. I'm just having a conversation with you now. Do you know there's a moment in the film where, and I haven't said this to anyone else, where I completely dissociated from the fact that I was in the movie and I was watching a movie. That doesn't happen ever. And it's the moment when we're in the Hornithropter, sorry, Ornithopter. Um, and we're going, that is our sex name for it, by the way. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was like, she just said that. Yeah. <laughs> we had fun names. Don't even get me started on the sandworms. So um, we're going up um, engines, whatever happens. I don't want to spoil anything for everyone else. But there's a shot where the Ornithopter is just gliding. And it's kind of a steampunk image where it's just coming in, it's kind of Harry Potter riding on the griffin thingy when he's traveling against the water. And it just, I don't know why, it blew my mind. It was, there's so many scenes in this film, but that moment I was just like, this is an awesome film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt that way the entire time. But that's pretty cool that you're in the movie and you could still have that experience. It really yeah, is amazing. Never happened before. Yeah, I, I I have to say this is something I'm interested in knowing. Just and I, I'm sure you've just, you've discussed this already, but I'm fascinated by it. When you're filming on actual locations, not green screens, you have all this wind and sand flying around, and I wonder how it affects where you hit your marks, how you how it affects your performance, and okay. then at the end of the day, are you going home with like finding sand all over yourself? I mean, I'm just wondering, like, kind of how that plays out. Yeah, that is exactly. And then you have the same clothes for another additional shot in Budapest and you put something on and you're like, wow, that's a whole bucket of uh, Abu Dhabi sand right there. <laughs> uh, you know what? There's a scene where we land on the on. Um, oh, my gosh, my mind uh, on the planet and uh, and I'm wearing a gold dress with chains and yes. the so long and the wind is so strong and this veil is just going all over the place it was living but it but basically what denny said it kind of became its own life on this eye on this planet which was perfect but denny will find symbolism in a sand corn in budapest <laughs> because yeah. he's because that's what he does um yeah. but it, it wasn't to be honest i don't want to kill it for you but the Abu Dhabi scenes where we were in, in sand and running, there were a couple of moments, but other than that, it wasn't very difficult. The, the suits were amazingly comfortable. We were shooting two hours in the morning, like four to six. And then in the afternoon between like five and seven, we couldn't film during the day because it was nearly 50 degrees. So we had to adapt to oh. the environment. 
to be able to film this film about the environment, which was also very lovely. Well, I want to say congratulations. You've given me the wrap already. I, I wanted to geek out with you about that epic sandworm shot when you and Timmy see that. Oh, I mean, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my I life. Really the wrap, but you know what? When we did that, I didn't know how big the sandworm was going to be. So when we were filming, then he was like, can you just look higher? No, higher. No, no, higher. How small do you think this worm is? Keep on looking up. <laughs> So when you see me and I'm like this, that is me realizing at that moment how big this worm actually was. That's awesome. Well, Rebecca, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. I truly an honor to talk to you for this film, particularly. You should be very proud of the work you did. You were brilliant in the film emotionally. When you're waiting outside the room during, during the test, I was just like, I was with you. Everything, immersion, brilliant performance. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. I'll see you soon. Where Hans Zimmer's score is one of the best scores he's ever written in his entire career. And I wanted to ask you as an actor, when you're performing in a movie, the score is not there. And then when you see the actual film, the score that enhances the storyline, the narrative structure and everything, what's it like for you to watch your performance with the score, specifically this score by Zimmer? Well, if it's a good score, it's it's nice because then it doesn't interfere with my acting. If if it's a, if it's a score that is sort of underlining what I'm doing already, then I get upset because uh, mm -hmm. I, I try to balance how much acting I should do of a certain color, and you, you don't want some, somebody to come in and change that balance. Hmm, interesting. But, but, I know but, but, but Zimmer's music in this is fantastic, and that's why you should see it in the. In the you have to see it in the cinema in, in, in a real theater. Because the, the 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 physical power of his score is is incredible, and uh, and you would get evicted if you played it the way it should be played at home, you know. Yeah, it's genuinely amazing. I know you're getting a lot of questions about the makeup. I'm not going to ask you how long you sat in the chair. I know you get those questions Thank all you. the time. But I'm actually more interested in knowing when you finally see yourself in all of it, and you look in the mirror how much that helps you find the character. And I get that, like, as you see yourself, it has to be something that's probably enhancing the ability to step into his mindset. Do you do, you do it throughout the process of the makeup or do you do it kind of when you look in the mirror and get to set? Well, it's, it's uh, I know where I'm going and I, I'm not a method actor, which means that uh, I come from theater, you know, where you do, you can do three, three characters in a, in a Shakespeare play in, a, in the same evening. So you, you have to be able to not become the character because then you're fucked. Uh, so so, <laughs> it's, uh, 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 so I, I switch on and off like this, easy. Uh, it, it's, it's the, the process is to, to, to decide how to do it and how much. And in this case, uh, I don't do much acting. It's it's uh, it's the presence of this physicality that is that is the power of him, and you don't have to do much. And the sets are helping you; they're monstrous, enormous, and and very spooky sets. Uh, so so you don't have to do much, but you but you have to bring life to him, which means that you have, have to make sure that the, you're not so covered in prosthetics that that you can't express yourself, and you have to find a way of moving that is human in this, all this rubber, you know? And I wanted him to have a slightly effeminate way of moving very smoothly, very delicately. And, and, and to be able to do that in that suit, I actually had to, for the first time in my life, get a personal trainer and, and try physically to, to build up muscles enough to do it. You say, this is my dune. That was obviously a, a great line, it's in the trailer. What that line means to you, you're basically saying the title of the film. I know the character doesn't know that, but I'm wondering when you say that line, you know, it's a very important line, how you figured out how you were gonna talk like him, that voice and just saying, this is my dune. It's a really, really powerful line. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, as you said, the character doesn't know it's. Uh, it will be in the trailer, uh, and 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 so I don't. I don't care about that, and I don't care. It's like I don't care about uh, what 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 the audience uh, have, what what they come in with, what what baggage they come in with, or how it will be used. I just have to be tr truthful to the moment and to the character. What he he says, he says it, and he says it for a reason, you know. Wow. Well, well, thank you very much for your time, Stellan. You were brilliant in this film. And I say this with the greatest respect. It reminded me a lot of Brando and Apocalypse Now. And I, I genuinely thought that was a brilliant, brilliant thing. And I, I would imagine you were giving that an homage, I hope. 
Yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, I mean, the silky pajama, that's all Brando. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, congratulations to you, Stella, and have a wonderful day. This is a brilliant film. You should be very proud of the work you did, sir. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you.